Samantha here. Welcome back to another episode of Sims 4 Get to Work. And we are back with Harrison and he's just grabbing himself some breakfast. And I know normally I try to flip flop and go from house to house to house to house, whatever. But um, this particular episode, we have to go with Harrison to work because this is when um, Melanie will give her statement, essentially. So what are you doing? Who are you watching? Who is she going to watch? Oh, that's daddy. Okay. I was like, who are you going to go watch? She's probably like, I'm going to watch him because I'm hungry. He need to give me something to eat. So let's give baby girl Ooh, something to eat because I'm sure she poor. is going to be starving. So let's go give her, it's breakfast time. So I would love to give her something healthy. I guess we'll give her some yogurt. Let's give her some yogurt. She also need, actually stop. She needs a diaper change. I could, we could smell it as it's coming down the stairs. Oh my gosh. That's a pretty bad diaper. If you could smell it when it's coming down the stairs. <laughs> So change your diaper and then give her some food. We're going to give her some yogurt for breakfast, which is delicious. Um, it's almost school time. So little man, you need to get up. Come grab uh, some leftovers as well. Just come get some of these pancakes. And mommy is working from home today. And it's so funny. Her, <laughs> her job today is to watch four hours of TV and then write a column about the festival. So I'm going to have her going to come down here and watch some... You know what, if we have to watch about a festival, maybe we could watch some World Culture Network. So I'm going to have her toggled up to do that. And Daniel is just in here still sleeping. So um, it's kind of strange. I wanted him last episode to kind of ask Brandy about moving back in. But he got off from work by the time she got home. So um, he wasn't oh, able to uh, to have the conversation with her. So at some point, I guess we need to try to figure out a way to get that taken care of. Because, yeah, while, while Harrison is very um, open to helping out the family or what have you, he's definitely like I can't I can't do this for long I think you need to get your stuff together with your wife and your kids and be in their life and and fix it you know you gotta fix it you gotta fix it why does baby girl's eyes oh, okay never mind I thought they looked very like far away they just that you couldn't see like the whites of her eyes but she has little teeny eyes she's a little teeny one anyway so we're gonna sit here and here's some stars working an hour so let's talk to son real quick he has to go to school he's gonna be late but that's okay um, you know what I was just thinking as we talking about school and being late I wonder if there's a um, if when you're um, that is so cute Harrison I really want you to sit down because that was a really cute picture. that was really cute y'all all sitting down having dinner breakfast <laughs> I was about to say dinner having breakfast and um, talking over oh she's so cute but I wonder if when we get seasons where we have like vacations like will the kids get out of school isn't that a good question? Have they said that yet? I don't know that they have. I haven't been, I'm so crazy because I haven't been reading a lot of the vlog post. The, the blog post. I said blog. The blog post. Is it almost, oh, it is almost his birthday, y'all. So real quick before I lose my train of thought. It is almost Harrison's birthday. So, okay. Thank you, mama. Um, it is almost Harrison's birthday, but we'll take care of that uh, probably next episode. So, um, but, you know, I haven't been reading a lot of the blogs because I want to be like surprised, you know, when everything happens. But um, I'm curious to some of the, like, I have a lot of questions in my head about how everything is going to work. So I know for sure that I already saw that it was confirmed that there'll be no snow depth. And honestly, I don't even have a problem with that. Um, can we let your daughter out first, though, before you do that? Can we do that? You got work in a couple minutes. So why don't you go clean this stuff up and let your daughter out. Let her go have herself some fun. Yes, Mama, why don't you go on and wake up? Because I know I know you're hungry. Oh, and we's about sure to get up out of here in just about four seconds. Uh, probably won't even be able to get that started. Yeah, he probably won't even be able to clean up everything before. Yep, he has to go to work. All right, guys, here we are at the precinct, and he's just going to send Melanie a quick little text message just to let her know that he is here and that she could just kind of stop by whenever she is ready. So in the meanwhile, though, we have a handful of things we need to do. We got to go on patrol. We got to exercise for one hour. I am tempted to do the exercise. Oh, he is maxed out. Okay. Um, Yeah, he maxed out fairly quick with the exercise thing. You know what? I think what I'm going to do, y'all... Um. This whole situation with this dude at the desk, like, I mean, you know, I really want this office for, for, for himself, <laughs> but I don't know how to do it. Then I put a computer out here and then now it's being taken here. I mean, like, do y'all spawn new cops every single day? I'm just curious. Like there's. 
people all there is absolutely oh i'm gonna say there's nobody in lockup today okay well let's do this i don't want to go on patrol today to be honest with you guys i kind of want to stay close to the building so that we can wait for melanie so i think what we're going to do is come over here maybe go do oh some commando training i never seen that before so we're gonna go do some commando training for a bit kind of see what's happening with that and um we only have to do that for an hour if we issue an all points bulletin, we're going to have to go out into the world. Um, so I might try to just, I mean, we're at the top of our career. I'm not too worried about just like maxing out this little trophy thing like too much. Hey, doppelganger. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, I do want him to do a good day, good job at work. But I do want him to kind of hang around because he's definitely like, he's not supposed to be here. But you know what? Now I think about it. He's not supposed to be like involved. So we might have to see if we could find someone that can help him in that aspect and be like a confidant. Oh, goodness. Okay. Growl at that bag. Growl at it. Yeah. Okay. Harrison, you made me swallow hard right there because that was crazy. <laughs> you had me nervous just a bit. I mean, look at his face though. He is focused. He's like, I'm focused, man. <laughs> okay let me see real quick while he's working out you know what well would rosemary be a good person to ask to help us out with this situation probably not but no maybe so why is this lady down here cursing wait a minute lady why is you down here cursing though i would check you need some hair i might randomize her some hair real quick because y'all need to fix i one of these days i'll sit down and do it i think it's mc Cass. no back mc dresser and it's randomized Maybe not. Randomize a part. Let's try that. And randomize hair. No. 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 MC Command. MC Dresser. Randomize part. Randomize hair. No. Okay, maybe she just don't want no hair. All right, you know. Do you. Do you, boo-boo. Do you. I want to see who you're pregnant by, but I'm not going to. You know what? We could ask Do... Nah, I don't want to ask Doppelganger. Um, I'm trying to decide who we could ask to go over there and help us with the case. So we got Kristen, Hannah. Um, we got Meredith Shepard. And then we have um, Rosemary. So we have a better relationship with Rosemary. Will Rosemary feel like she should be involved in it, given her history with Hunter? Um... No, that'll be a conflict of interest. I'm just going to put it out there right there. So the only other person I'd probably ask is, um, golly, we don't have a good relationship with anybody but Rosemary, but I feel like Rosemary wouldn't be the perfect person to do this with. So um, Elsie Stapleton, the one that looks like um, a pancakes lady. I think I'm gonna come over here. Let me come do a cheerful introduction to her. He's already finished getting his thing done. So we're going to come over here real quick um, yes. and make a cheerful introduction to her. Just kind of talk with her a little bit and be like, look, oh, you know what? We could discuss case theories. Okay. So look, I got a, a, um, a witness coming in <laughs> and it's close to my family. It's actually my brother's um, girlfriend slash baby mama slash whatever. Um, and, you know, I would love if you could come in on with me and kind of interview yeah. her. Just kind of like get the information that we need to get in regards to this case. And, you know, I really can't do it because I am the brother of the suspect. So, you know, if you could just do that for me, I'd appreciate it. Let's see if she agrees with it. Let's discuss some case theories. She's like, oh, yeah, hi, Harrison. We don't never speak, so I apologize for that. But, um, you know. Oh, my gosh. This is funny. Hold on, y'all. I got to get a picture of that because this is funny. Kim All right, so we're just kind of going over the case theories and kind of sharing notes and stuff with her. So let's go on and continue this going on. We're going to discuss some interest. I, she doesn't look like she's interested in it. You know, she's kind of focused right now on her instant messenger, thinking about fighting someone that she saw, <laughs> got some information about. But look, can you stay focused for just a little bit? We're going to gossip a bit. Um, look, she's like, you know, she, he's like, yeah, she's going to be coming in in a second. So if you could just kind of like sit in with me. So I think that she's going to go on and agree to do it. She's probably not really into it. It looks like she's just like, whatever. If you need some help, fine. I'll help you. You know, whatever. Um, maybe you could convince her now. Think about it. Like, hey, this will be a, a good thing for your job. Like for your, for your, what am I trying to say? For your, your role, you know, for your experience ah you could get a chance to um you know inter interrogate a witness on a high profile case such as this self as such as this oh my gosh i can't talk today um but anyway i was up fairly late last night so i'm just playing catch up oh, i'm playing catch up guys i'm playing catch up uh what's going on in here with all these guys are they arguing oh i would love if they just like started fighting and stuff in the jail that'd be so funny to me but um who are these in here anyway 
Connor Rhodes, Norman Maraki, Marakami. Um, I can't see you, dude. I can't see you, dude. Rowan Kerr and J Jace. Alley. Okay. All right. Anyway, so he's finished talking to her, I guess. Let's go see what else we could do. We need to take some mug shots. So while we're here, let's go take some mug shots a bit. Um, let's go grab the Connor Rhodes, dude, I guess. So she's she's agreed to it. So cool. We'll see you in a minute. I'll give you a ring when she comes in. So we're probably going to have to text her again just to kind of make sure she makes her way over here fairly soon um because we don't we're about to be halfway through our work day in a second anyway so we're gonna take this gentleman and go um take his mug shots i guess i'm just gonna do a little thing over here like i said he's gonna try his hardest just to kind of hang out and just stay around the area because we want to <laughs> we want to be here for when melanie gets here you know especially because we've convinced melanie to come in so i'm sure she would love a familiar face as far as um you know, coming into a precinct and doing something as nerve wracking as what this is. So, you know, I totally understand. Okay, so we did that. Did we get the mugshot? Okay, we, okay, I'm gonna say we got the mugshot. What's the issue? Do I have to do his fingerprints? Um, all right, so let's go put him back up. Uh uh, uh uh. Go put this dude up. Go put this dude up. More choices. Uh, no, 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 no. More choices. Okay, no, 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 no. Maybe I need to lock this. Click this. Wait, darn it, y'all. Uh, lock and cell. All right, cool. Let's go put him back in the cell. I don't know what makes them think they could just walk away and leave. Like, why don't they just autonomously... Dude, seriously? If you don't go catch this dude before he walk out the building... Oh, he... okay, he's coming to me. He's like, yeah, you needed to lock me up, remember? Remember, don't have me out here looking crazy. Then they gonna come and be talking about something. They gonna come put me forcibly inside the jail. Like, go put me back in the jail. Ooh, doppelganger going in. Why, when they do it, though, I'm gonna open it here, but he's gonna probably end up in here. That's so crazy to me. That's like the weirdest glitch. Like, come on. Um, anyway, so let's see what else we need to do. We need to discuss some more case theories. So let me go back. I guess let me go talk to Doppelganger a little bit. We'll discuss case theory. Where are you going? We were supposed to be... T really? Y'all, she just bounced on me. Girl, we was... Is she going out on, the, on a... Where is she going? We were supposed to be doing a case... Girl, I swear, if she disappears, I'm going to be so mad. You were supposed to be doing the interviewing for me. Hold on. I'm going to add her to the group. Uh, oh, wow. She was like, I'll be back. She essentially was like, I'll be back. But where are you going? I mean, where are you going? Why? It just says, wait, it's, <laughs> why it says they're too busy working to be, they're too busy working to join. Okay. Wow. Yeah, she's gone. Alrighty then. Um. All right. So let me go on and hit Melanie up one more time and be like, girl, when is you getting here? Send her a text. When are you getting here? I really want you here soon because, you know, I only have like half a day left and I don't want to stay late. So, you know, we got other things we got to do today. So he's going to just hit her up real quick and just be like, hey, when are you coming? She's like, I'm on my way now. All right, guys. So she says she's on her way now. So let's go over here and see where she may be at. And um, just kind of like wait on her and just figure out what the situation is. I guess we'll just sit over here and just kind of wait till we see her. Um, I don't see her coming. Hopefully she's really going to show up, y'all. I know Harrison is kind of anxious to kind of get this taken care of. Chat with Evelyn. All right. Who is Evelyn? And is she coming or not? I don't see her yet. But she says she's on her way, so I guess we'll just kind of wait and see what'll happen. In the meanwhile, he wants oh. to chat with Evelyn. I don't well, know who Evelyn. Evelyn is, but I guess we'll chat with her for a little bit. So, um, oh. I don't see her, y'all. She said she was on her way. I'm not sure what that's about. All right, who is Evelyn? Okay, let's go talk with Allie a little bit. We'll just go do a cheerful yeah. introduction. We're just going to hang out here until we see her, y'all, because, <laughs> you know, I think he's just going to be like, he might, he's micromanaging this situation right now. He's just like, you know what? I am going to stay right here until she shows up. Okay, guys, after waiting for so long, uh -huh. Melanie has finally made it. Let's come over here and um, I guess try to talk with her before she loses her nerve and leaves. So let's uh, ask about her day, ask her how everything is going. Um, she did bring her. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought she came with somebody. Maybe that was somebody else that was walking past. But anyway, so she is here. I'm going to come out here and just kind of like speak to her and um, just tell her to come on and come in. Let me add her to the group so she can just, I guess, not run away from me because y'all know how these Sims are. Um, to, they're too busy to jo wait. What? Okay. All right. Well, hopefully I can come out here. Let me discuss some logic puzzles. Maybe we can come right here and sit here. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe this will work. I have no oh. clue. Can you come in here and sit or no? 
Dark she's, in she's in a flirty yeah. mood right now. Flirty. Like, what's going on? Okay, so you ready to go in here and do this, girl? Are you ready to go in here and do this? Let me ask her to come in for a little bit. Just hang out for a little bit. You know, I got someone that could talk to you. You know, it'd be real easy, real simple. No worries. Um, and just see if she's okay with that. I met Moses at a party when we were teens. He was so different than me. I grew up in a household with both parents, my dad a successful surgeon and my mom a charity events organizer. And he grew up living with his uncle who was always on the road. I was what you would say a good girl and he was more of a troubled teen. But that is probably what attracted me to him even more. We got close and my parents noticed changes in me and forbid me from seeing him. It didn't matter, I sneaked behind my parents' back and continued to see him anyway. His uncle was a mean guy. He was involved in a lot of criminal activity and was menacing to Moses. It didn't matter though, cause when I was with him it was just us two. He would listen to me talk for hours. We would talk about the future, about our goals, about things we wanted to do, and especially our future together. Things got complicated. Moses' uncle increasingly convinced him into helping him in heist and then I got pregnant. My parents were livid to say the least. They commanded me to put the baby up for adoption but I had other plans. I left my home and went to get a place with Moses. We made the best of the situation but money in the upcoming birth of our baby was definitely a challenge. And Moses, you know, he reverted back to the only thing he knew for quick money and that was hacking. But it wasn't enough. We gave birth to our son and named him Moses Jr. Moses was growing and we were living on nickels. My parents had disowned me and I was doing my best to provide for my baby. Moses I think felt the pressure. He knew I was used to having a certain lifestyle and he wanted to give it to me. I kept stressing it was not a big deal. I was actually very happy. Soon his uncle introduced him to a group of hackers that were planning a huge heist that would siphon off large amounts of money over a long period of time for a huge payday. I didn't want him to do it. I was worried that something would happen, but he insisted and went off to do the job. Of course, just like I thought, one of the guys in the group happened to be an undercover officer, and during the job, they were all arrested. With Moses in jail, I became desperate. The police eventually came to me and asked for help with the case in exchange for a lighter sentence for Moses. There were bigger forces at play than the group Moses joined and they needed my help getting information. I agreed and found the information that they needed. Moses begged me not to help. He knew it was a dangerous situation but I wanted to help. I needed to help. He didn't deserve to be in jail. It became more dangerous than the police originally intended and they had to place me and Moses into protective custody. The trial took years and went further than we originally thought and increasingly became more and more dangerous for Moses Jr. and I. After the trial, the police issued us new identities and we moved. Moses was very upset about my role in the trial and what we had quickly dwindled. I continued to support him in jail as much as I could and soon I met Hunter. Hunter reminded me a lot of Moses in the beginning. Their spirits are very similar, but when Moses got out and came looking for us, he found me with Hunter and that's when things took a turn. I think Moses blamed me for him being in jail. Because of my role in the case, Moses had a hard time in jail. So when he was released, he thought things would go back to the way they were, and they couldn't. My fear is that with information of this case plastered all over the news, word would eventually get out about where Moses Jr. and I are. And I can't put him in danger. He doesn't deserve that. And I don't know how I can help the case or Hunter, but I know I need to protect my child. Hunter was trying to protect me, yes, I know that's in my heart, but things just went terribly wrong. But for my family's safety, I, I just can't, I can't help this case any further. And I think it's best I prepare to move away. All right, guys, so you just heard <laughs> Melanie's, yeah, um, I guess, statement, so to speak, regarding the entire Some, situation uh, yeah. um, with her and Moses and her and Hunter and she has kind of made the decision that she is just going to leave town. If you guys um, didn't grasp everything, basically Melanie, her real name is Melanie Hamilton. 
Um, she goes by Melanie Weber right now, but basically she's been in witness protection since the case against Moses, um, was finished or done. Um, the, apparently the group that Moses was working with was working with a larger, more dangerous group. And when she turned on them and started giving names, whatever, they pretty much put a price on her head. So, or what they would, what the police would assume that would happen was that they put a price on her head. So she pretty much moved to the area that she did to kind of get away, get a fresh start, change her name. And then she met Hunter. And honestly, y'all, the situation with Hunter, him doing what he did to Moses, just put her back out in the forefront for everybody to see. So she was having like a really tough decision. Like she wanted to stay behind and be here for Hunter and, you know, have a life with him like she kind of envisioned them to have. And long story short, it just didn't work out for the best because... You know, she knows that she has to do what she has to do in order to protect her and Moses Jr. Because, I mean, truth be told, the names are out there. People know they're going to find out pretty soon that it was Moses that was killed. And they're going to put two and two together. He went looking for Melanie. And people knew that him and Melanie were still dealing with each other, even though they technically weren't, but they were. So long story short, she has made the decision that she is going to move. So Hunter, I mean, Harrison is like playing it light right now, like taking pictures or whatever. But he's really proud that she came in. I'm going to go on and tell her goodbyes. So she can go on and get done what she needs to get done. I don't, wrong thing. I don't know um, what Hunter is going to think. I can't even begin to tell you guys, like if Hunter is going to be upset, if he's going to be like, just go then. But the sad thing about the situation is, you know, because of, um, I'm trying to tell her goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. Because of the way the situation is and her being protected by the government, essentially, for her role, she doesn't have to stand. She doesn't have to go to trial. She doesn't have to be a witness. She could choose to be one, but she wants to put the safety of her and her kid first. So she wants to, um, to, to take that step and not have to... Um, do the trial or whatever so yeah i mean i i don't know y'all sadly though she could have the choice like i was saying to kind of stay behind and um do what she needs to do and help hunt her out or she could um leave and protect her and her son and that's essentially what she has decided to do so i'm gonna go and i guess talk with uh oh golly what's his name what's the new chief's name that should be my desk shaura chief basu i'm gonna come over here and just discuss some case theories and just ask him where should we go next <laughs> poor Hunter harrison he's like uh he's in a flirty mood because she was all flirty but he really shouldn't be like really you really shouldn't be but anyway he's gonna go talk with chief basu really quickly and just kind of get his take on it now there's no witness they have no witness as to what happened it's just going to be like hunter's word against you know who the eyewitnesses that they have the person that got the cell phone footage um Hunter, you know, so I, I honestly have no clue what you guys, you guys can chime in in the comment box. What do you think is going to happen? How do you think this whole thing is going to play out? I really don't know. But Melanie is totally not going to be involved. And she was the only one that physically witnessed what happened. She's the only one that could attest that she thinks it was an accident or she knows that it was or was it intentionally? Personally, I think it was an intentional go knowing Hunter, but you know, it's what's up for a jury right now. It's up for them to decide. Was it an accident? Was it uh, premeditated? Like what the situation was. But anyway, Harrison is going to be wrapping up his job, his uh, work day pretty soon. He seems like he's feeling very accomplished about his day, even though we only got one, <laughs> one little, um, what you call it done but at least he was able to get melanie in to get a statement uh at least they got the statement the statement will still be administered into the court it'll just be anonymatized anonymatized is that a word anonymize what would be the word it would be it would be anonymous it'd be an anonymous thing you know but whatever uh just to protect her as the witness but anyway let's get ready to head home all right, guys, we are back home with Harrison's family and little Connor's down here. Just Oh, Colin. I said Connor. Colin's down here playing with his little Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's so cute. And baby girl is upstairs all playing with her blocks. So they're just like all doing their own little things. just kind of like playing around. And Mrs. Harrison, oh, she came out here to greet Harrison, kind of see what's going on. I feel bad for them because I feel like they really haven't had like any 
any type of interaction, any time together, anything like that. She does need to finish. She didn't get a chance to do any work today. He's all blowing kisses at her. I guess he's feeling super accomplished about the whole situation. I'm going to have her go in here and watch TV. And on the other hand, I feel like Harrison needs to reach out to Hunter. Just kind of give him like a heads up of everything that's going on. He does need to go use the bathroom. But let me try to at least reach Hunter right now and just... Kind of send him a text message like, bro, hey, we really need to talk. Um, you know, I don't even know if I could really tell you this, but I just want to give you a heads up about some things that's going on and see what he says. So in the meanwhile, we're going to actually switch on back to, oh my gosh, you just go walk through the bricks, aren't you? I knew it. I knew it. I'm going to switch over to Hunter because next episode we'll be back with Harrison because it's his birthday and I want to make sure we can get a chance to throw him a party. So I'm going to switch over to Hunter and I'll see you guys there. All right, guys, here we are at Hunter, and he is actually over at Francis' house, and he just received the text message from Harrison, and I'm not sure how he's going to respond. You guys saw that episode last time. Melanie wasn't even looking at Hunter's direction, okay? Hunter wasn't even looking at Melanie's direction, so I don't know if she's feeling some type of way about the whole situation or... You know, I just don't know. And I don't know essentially what he's feeling too. But apparently he's back on his rebound. I get in the game file and he's over here at Francis' house. So I'll just have him over really? here and talk with her for a little bit and just kind of see what's going on. Maybe they get a blow a kiss yes. and just kind of like hang yeah, out or whatever. Um, I think he asked her about her day and all that good Ooh. stuff. So the last time he saw Francis, Francis actually did propose to him and he told her no. Um, not sure why he told her no. I know I was speculating that maybe it was because while he has all the pressure. Oh my goodness. No, Francis. <gasps> Francis, I was just saying that you did that last time. Why would you do it again? Why would you do it again? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Y'all, Francis, I, I don't even know. I was just saying. <laughs> I can't with her right now. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Now he's all stressed out. I don't know. I was just trying to say she proposed to him last time we saw her and we hadn't seen her since then. And she had been acting funny with him as well. But apparently he figured out a way to sw swindle his way on into her good graces. And now he didn't mess it up again because she autonomously proposed and now she is running away from him. Um, let me go see. We're going to have to see if she'll let us in the house at this point because I mean, it's stupid because he kind of wants to get married. Like I feel like he does, but maybe now, but she just, it was just wrong timing because she just happened to ask, will she let him in? Okay. She did. Okay. She just happened to ask like right when he just got this message from, from Harrison and he's like, girl, I got way too much on my mind. Like right now is not the time. So, um, let me see. Where did she go? Like, why is her house so weird? Why is this like in the middle? Of, where did she go just that quick? Okay, she immediately, y'all, she just like walked off and just left. Now she's in here watching what diamonds are for Sims. Seriously? I, you know, I, Francis, which is so crazy to me, because if I remember correctly, Francis is a not, yeah, she's not committal. So why does she still keep wanting to propose to him? I don't know. And they don't even have like a high enough green level. He's tense because he's like, you know, timing. Yeah, timing is everything. He's just like, it's just not time. You keep wanting to talk about marriage and it's something that I know you want, but I'm just not ready for it. So I'm going to come over here and watch a movie with her and see um, if we could just figure out a way to kind of smooth things over. He is like super stressed out now about this, but we're going to go in here and try to just like, I guess, oh goodness, y'all, she just walked away. <sighs> Hunter, where does she go? You're going to have to go apologize to her. You're going to have to smooth apology. She literally has the bed icon on her head. She's about to go get in the bed and cry. She's just like, I just want to make things official with you. And you're not even, you're not even allowing it. Like she wants to be with him. She wants to love him. She wants to help him through the situation that he has going on. Um, so I'm just going to try to my hardest. Okay. He ain't even getting up y'all. I told you to go smooth apology. He's like, I'm in the middle of watching this movie. You know, she the one decided to go propose, not me. Okay, y'all, now they decided they wanted to come cut the grass, so I'm sorry for the background noise. I'm like, man, I can't get it together. Anyway, he's supposed to be smooth apologizing to her, and he's, like, trying to watch a movie or whatever. But he's just like, look, Francis, in my time, I will come to you. Don't, 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 
don't propose to me. Like, you know, I got to get this case over with. I got to figure out everything that's going on right now. He's going to share his insecurities about everything. But I do want him to talk about the fact that she's embarrassed and kind of just like, is she? Whoa, y'all. She's just like, dude, I don't want to keep hearing the same thing over and over again. Either we're going to make this official or look how she's looking at her hand. Like, she like, let me check the clock. Like, let me check the clock. Oh, y'all. Wow. Okay. I, I don't even know what to say. But I think I'm just going to have to discuss embarrassing mood. I understand you're embarrassed. I apologize for embarrassing you again. Second unwanted proposal. But, you know, let me figure some things out. And when I'm ready, I'll come to you. I think, personally, I think Francis would make a, a, a nice wife. But, like, the whole situation with her, like I explained to you before, is just like she's always so hot and cold. But she's just walking off, y'all. She's just like, you know what? Just let yourself out. Because you spent all your day with me and last night. She, he probably was over here last night. Now he wants to flirt with her. Seriously, dude, he wants to make... Are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me right now? Y'all, she done covered her doggone face in this bed. Oh my gosh, this is them. Oh, that's such a nostalgic picture. This is them. Oh my gosh, they've been like friends for forever. Like, are you kidding me? Let me have him come over here. And y'all, and then he goes back to finish watching... This dude, he don't have not a care in the doggone world. I don't, I don't know what makes him. Never mind. I do know what makes him so cold and heartless. <laughs> I do. I know it makes him so cold and heartless. But I'm just going to assume because I know Hunter's style. I would not be surprised if after the whole situation last time with the party and uh, Melanie completely ignoring and avoiding him. I wouldn't be surprised if he found her his way over to her house last night and he's been here probably all day. I would not be surprised. And she probably took it like, okay, he wants to make things official with me. Let me just go on and try to propose again. And he just told her no again. He just told her no again. And the sad thing is <laughs> she's still gaga for him. She still wants Don't something with cow. him. It's just crazy. Um, anyway, I'm going to have them like make out or whatever. I don't know. Kiss. Maybe make her feel a little bit better about the situation. Reassure her a bit and just say, you know, I'm here. Just give me time. You know, whatever. Let me just get this case behind me. You know, if I got time to do, I got to get my time done. And then we'll talk about it then. You know, so Francis seems like a ride or die. You guys can comment down in the comment box and let me know what you think. Melanie, on the other hand, Melanie's like, I'm out. I think Hunter needs to go talk with her. He needs to get some closure. What's going to happen with the baby? I'm sure she's going to take the baby with her, which means, you know, Hunter won't even have his son in his life. Um, but obviously there's consequences to the actions that he took. And they're way bigger than, you know, what he thought they would be. Exactly. He's stressed, y'all. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this episode up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think down in the comment box down below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.